We're Kyle and Jared Lott of Snag TV. Each week we go into millions of homes to show you great hunting. And we couldn't do what we do without TC Outdoors doing what they do. It doesn't matter if your adventure takes you fishing in the local pond or on a cross country hunt. TC Outdoors is going to be there for you with gear, know-how and support, just like they are for us. They've been here for years. We know them. And we trust them. So come by TC Outdoors on Northside Drive. Tell them Jared and Kyle sent you. And welcome to the Georgia Southern Post Game Wrap Up Show. I'm Josh Aubrey, being joined by Mike Anthony, sports editor and Georgia Southern beat writer for the Statesboro Herald. And Mike, Georgia Southern comes into this game. We knew they hadn't had, had a game at home yet. We had some expectations that the Eagles might be able to do to Arkansas State what Arkansas State did to Georgia Southern last year, which is turn their season around with a big victory at home. It didn't happen. The Eagles fall hard here at home. I look up at the stands there in the third quarter after the 36th point of the game by Arkansas State, and it looked like pretty much everybody was gone by that point, which is disheartening as well. Your thoughts on the game and you know, try to sum this up because the Eagles over 100 yards total offense more than Arkansas State but almost 20 points less on the scoreboard. Yeah definitely disheartening no matter uh, what, how you look at it whether it's the fans in the stands the play on the field uh, just a tough go of it here for Georgia Southern in the early part of the season and, and tonight you had a little bit of a spark early with being able to play on your home field Georgia Southern hanging in it early spinning its wheels on offense once again early in the game punting on its first three drives but the defense early on keeping the team in it the the Eagles take a lead their first two leads of the season uh, in the second quarter but what really killed them was right before halftime they scored with just over a minute left to take a lead and that's when the defense fell, fell apart they they allow uh, Arkansas State to go down the field in less than a minute get a touchdown to put them back on top Arkansas State gets the uh, kickoff in the second half and they end up you know driving down taking a two score lead and from there it just went downhill and the offense while it did kind of get its feet under it a little bit 493 yards of total offense also four turnovers and a lot of them coming at inopportune times and we were worried justin ha justice hansen might take georgia southern apart and he did just that threw for over 300 yards and four touchdowns in the game yeah i think that the georgia southern secondary really took itself apart more than justice hansen when you look at the stats uh, they hold him to 12 of uh, 20 26 uh, through the air so under 50 percent completion only 12 completions total you'd think that ends up being a good night for georgia southern but over 300 yards off of those 12 completions a lot of uh, guys getting behind the georgia southern defense some of them just running through open space for big gains and touchdowns and you know you talk about disheartening that'll do it in a hurry when you see guys just running unchecked for uh, big gains and scores big play is the story here georgia southern falls let's get out and see some of the highlights the Georgia Southern Eagles finally at home as they open things up at Paulson, hosting Arkansas State in their Sun Belt opener. We pick up the action in the first quarter, and the defense trying to set a tone, sacking Justice Hansen. A little bit later, Hansen goes back to pass, and Chris De La Rosa there for the interception. Arkansas State with five turnovers in the ball game. The Eagle offense unable to capitalize though. They'd go three and out the first couple series of the game. Wesley Fields dropped for a loss. A little bit later, Sawyer Williams starts the scoring with a 43 yard field goal, three to nothing at the end of one. In the second, the Eagles trying to move downfield. Wesley Fields fights his way ahead for a first down that drive would stall in comes tyler bass for the 27 yard field goal and we're tied at three all arkansas state scores quickly thereafter as hansen finds chris murray wide open for the 56 yard touchdown the extra point failed and it was nine to three the eagles come right back montero garrett going 74 yards down the sidelines all the way in for the score and the Eagles with their first lead of the season. The defense coming back strong. Hanson going deep, but Kendall Vildor there for the interception. The Eagle offense trying to get something going, but Shy Wirtz is blindsided. Arkansas State will recover. And a couple plays later, they 
Turn that into points as Warren Wan goes 25 yards for the score. The extra point failed again and it was 15-10 Red Wolves. The Eagles then with another interception. Their third of the first half setting the offense up in excellent field position and this time they cash in. A nice option play here. And it's Wesley Fields fighting in for the score from eight yards out. The Eagles take a 17-15 lead, but that lead short-lived as Justice Hansen finds Chris Murray all alone for the 57-yard score. And we go to the half with the Eagles trailing by a score of 22-17. In the second half, Arkansas State picks up where they left off. Hansen to... Blake Mack for the 29-yard score to make it 29-17. A little bit later. And Shy Wirtz underthrown. This one picked off and ran back to midfield. And a few plays later, from the 12, Warren Wan goes in for his second touchdown of the game to make it 36-17. That score would hold into the fourth quarter. A rare bright spot for the Eagles here as Shy Wirtz airs it out. Perfect pass to OB Fortune who hauls it in. The lead cut to 36 to 25. But Arkansas State comes back again. Hanson to Omar Bayless. And they'd go on for the win here 43 to 25. Legacy of Statesboro, the student apartment experience you've been looking for. Legacy is right in the heart of Statesboro, Georgia, and is located directly across from the Georgia Southern Campus. Residents retreat to their own fully furnished apartments outfitted with spacious patios, vaulted ceilings, and full-size kitchens. When studying, residents take full advantage of Legacy's computer center with free printing. Other great features include a resort-style swimming pool, fitness center with cardio and weight machines, basketball and sand volleyball courts, and a pet-friendly environment. Stop by today to see this amazing student community waiting for you to call home. Legacy of Statesboro. After the game, we had a chance to talk with Coach Summers and some of the players about the loss. You know, we had the same juice, I feel like, the whole game. Uh, just towards the end, uh, a few things didn't go our way. You know, I threw the pick. Uh, it kinda, they kind of killed the momentum a little bit, I feel like. Um, and that's just on me. Uh, you know, and it is what it is. Yeah, you gotta, fit, gotta, gotta fix that. I can't be making those kind of mistakes in the game, in the comfort game like tonight. I didn't feel uncomfortable at any point of that game. Uh, the pressure, you know what I'm saying, it, it is what it is. Uh, but I feel like, you know what I'm saying, I was comfortable the whole game. Um, you know, just unfortunately things didn't go the way we wanted to, wanted to go tonight. Everybody really down, but you know, we tell all our players we gotta keep our head up. The season's not over with. Like I just told the other reporter, this team that we just played last year started off 0-4 and they end up winning our conference. So they give us a lot of inspiration. And these few days, we just got to get better. They, they made some plays. That's all, I mean, it's just it. Everybody saw they made plays. They made good plays. They made good catches. But we're going to bounce back from it. Going into tonight's game, uh, I really thought this. I, I, and again, I'll you know, uh, continue to say it. I, I thought that where we were going and, uh, and, and what we were trying to do throughout the week and where our players' heads were at and the way that we Took, a, took the approach from a preparation standpoint. I thought all those things were really there uh, going into it. Uh, I thought we had as much focus and as much juice and as much energy going into the game as we certainly had. And, uh, and I've got to you know, commend our guys for, for that. I uh, really thought tonight was going to be our breakthrough night. I really did. And, uh, and, and, but what we've got to do is we've got to keep working. Uh, and we've got to keep pounding the rock uh, with everything that we've got. I think that uh, a big part of it, you know, was again from uh, uh, offensively, I thought tonight at times when we executed well, I thought we executed as, as well as we have all year. And, uh, and, and I, I think that the thing that we got to continue to work towards is just to continue to be more consistent. Uh, and, and I really feel like the same thing from a defensive standpoint. I, I think that, again, when we executed tonight, I thought that, man, they played hard. Uh, I thought that you saw a lot of energy. I thought you saw a lot of guys being able uh, to play at a high level. Uh, five takeaways, you know, four interceptions by four guys that are getting their first interception in their career. And, um, and you know, but again, we, got, we give up too many
many big plays. So, so we've got to continue to work on our uh, consistency there. Uh, and, and again, there's a lot to be encouraged about. Uh, there's a lot to be encouraged about, but ultimately, uh, we're still not where we want to be. And there's nobody that's uh, more frustrated about that than I am. Uh, but I continue to see growth in what we're doing. Um, and I continue to see it in a lot of our players. You know, uh, I do. I think that Shy kind of goes into that same thing. I think that you see him executing. I think that you see how far he's come in three or four weeks. Um, you know, and uh, and I think that uh, again, we've just got to continue to work on the consistency part of of what we're doing, and we got to go back to work. And uh, and I and I certainly believe um, that our football team will continue to do that. Uh, the other piece I think that that I've got to point out, and I've really got to challenge myself, and I got to look myself in the eye with this, and uh, and I got to challenge our football team, and I got to challenge our coaches uh, from a discipline standpoint. There's some things that went on out there tonight that I am not uh, that I'm not pleased with, and we have just got to make that uh, continue to make that more of a focus point. Um, of what we're doing from a discipline standpoint. Uh, again, if we can become more disciplined, uh, and, I'll, and again, that, that, that's certainly something that starts with me, and I've got to challenge our football team and our players uh, to do a better job with that. Uh, but again, I, I do, I, I thought tonight would be our breakthrough night uh, and what we we're doing. I do think, again, that I saw on both offense and defense uh, where our execution at times tonight was as good as it's been all year. Uh, but again, and there is, there's a lot to be encouraged about. Um, and there's, there's nothing about, you know, feeling good about a loss. There's none of that. There's no part of that. Um, and I'm certainly frustrated, uh, as I know these young men in that locker room are as well. Uh, but I continue to see growth in a lot of these guys, and I'll continue to, to make sure that I'm doing everything that I can do from a head coach standpoint and everything that I can work towards and continue to have our guys head in the right direction and believing and improving in what we're doing week in and week out. Uh, I, I would really like to make sure that I say this. Uh, again, I, just our, our fan support, the amount of people that came out tonight, student section for a Wednesday night game, finished late. Uh, very appreciative of all the support that we had tonight from our fans and very appreciative of our students and everyone who came out tonight uh, for the game and, and stuck with it through the game and continued to cheer and, and help our guys through because it does. It means a ton to our players to be able to see that. Yes, it gets frustrating, and it should. It should bother them. You know? uh, if it didn't, if they weren't emotional, if it didn't frustrate them, uh, if it didn't frustrate me, um, then, then we probably wouldn't have our team the way we want them. But if, if I do think we do, which is why they're upset, which is why they're frustrated. Uh, but ultimately, it's like I started off saying earlier, uh, we've, we continue to be encouraged by things. We, we've got to do a better job, uh, again, of consistency with our execution and what we're trying to do. Because again, I think at times we did as good a job on offense and defense as we've done all year. And, and I do think that you see uh, improvement, but we've got to do a better job of being able to do that from a consistency standpoint. And, uh, and we got to clean up our discipline. What you were talking about earlier about we, we've got to get on, you know, there's some stuff that was going on out mm. there that you feel like you've got to get on to the players more, the coaches more, and you're taking some responsibility for that. Can you elaborate on that a little bit? Well, we've got to challenge ourselves. I mean, we do to be able to to be able to play with more discipline. I don't I don't think that there's. A, I'm not saying that that means I've got to get on to anybody more. We've got to be able to point it out. We've got to be able to show where it hurts. I mean. Um, you know, and how it's affecting our football team. U ultimately, uh, a, a football team that uh, that we want to represent our school, our university, the way that we want to, uh, that's how we want to act all the time. And that's certainly, you know, uh, what I'm going to try to stress. That's what I've always tried to stress. But, yes, we, we've got to be able to make sure that, uh, that the challenge of being able to uh, – be able to point out flaws, be able to point out faults during a game to individual players when they make poor decisions. Yes, I mean, that's a challenge. And then to be able to move on to the next two seconds, but that's why they call you head coach. And, uh, and as we move forward with that, yes, we'll have to challenge our players and our team. But you know what? We'll go back to work and it'll be next week. That's what, I mean, we're just going to continue to, to do what we're uh, trying to set our mind uh, to be able to do. Arkansas State's got a good football team and, uh, and Blake's been able to prove that. Uh, over the last couple of years of what they've done. And uh, my hat's off to them. And again, very appreciative of all the support, fan support we had for Wednesday night. And, uh, and very appreciative of our students being able to come out and support us the way they did tonight as well. All right, Mike. Well, you got an extra couple days as homecoming is approaching and New Mexico State's on the horizon. What do the Eagles do at this point? I guess there were moments with good defense, moments with some good offense. 
and special teams, but overall, you look up and you're 0-4, and that's the first time Georgia Southern's ever been 0-4 in the since the program was revived in the early 80s. Yeah, the last time they were 0-4 was actually the last year before the program was disbanded, 1941, the last time they got off to an 0-4 start. And you, you talk about having the extra rest before their next game. At this point, I'm not so sure that that's a good thing. Yeah, some bumps and bruises will heal a little bit, and the offense does look like it might be turning a corner, so maybe uh, an extra few days benefits them there. But when you're 0-4, that's just an extra few days that you have to hear about it. it. Sometimes you want to get right back out there and see if you can't put together more of the good plays than the bad plays. So if you're a Georgia Southern player now, I think that the challenge of the next uh, little extended week before the next game is just trying to look inside of the program, trying to lean on your guys, try to spur each other on. Because right now, looking outside the program, they're not going to hear very many good things. All right. So the next up for the Eagles, homecoming Saturday after next here at Paulson Stadium. I'm hoping to join us then. For Mike Anthony, I'm Josh Aubrey. See you soon.